Hi, and welcome back to some more QuantLab uh, portfolio optimization session. Um, we did in the last uh, video, um, simplistic classic mean variance optimization using bounds, and where we went through some code to do the simplest example of, of, of that. So today we're going to take this a bit further and look at um, the so-called black Litterman portfolio optimization which is actually um, a twist on, on classic mean variance optimization. Uh, so perhaps you have read the seminal paper from 91 uh, of the Black Litterman. Um, and if you don't have it, you should download this. Um, and perhaps there are some, some other papers as well that um, uh, will help you understand this paper as it's not entirely... Uh, uh, easy to understand how to implement it in practice. So uh, today we're not going to look at code and I'm going to go through just an example of, of how um, it's implemented in QuantLab. So what do we have? Uh, we have again a portfolio um, of stocks that we want to optimize uh, uh, and uh, as in the last example we just have some banking stocks. We uh, And um, uh, the black Litterman optimization uh, it takes its um, start in, in the notion that we're not using historical returns as the input for our uh, forward-looking optimization. Uh, it, it uses um, a hybrid of the, the market-implied uh, CAPM uh, returns and uh, our own investor views that we merge together in a statistical fashion so that we, we get uh, the, the risk premium that we should uh, demand from, from these holding these stocks in the market portfolio. And then we adjust these risk premium uh, with our own views. And then we get to um, a, a mixed uh, uh, view of, of uh, our uh, forward-looking returns. And with these returns, then, we can do classic mean variance optimization using the covariance matrix, as we did in the previous example. Uh, so what do we have, then? We, we have um, our current portfolio weights. So let us assume that our naive portfolio has equal weights, and that will then give us all else equal, uh, uh, a portfolio that's somewhere uh, in the non-efficient region um, and, and we're going to have bounds, lower bounds, upper bounds that we're going to be uh, no, uh, 0 and, and, and 1. Um, and then to get the implied risk premium uh, from the market portfolio we need to know the market weights of um, each um, individual stock and I've guesstimated these uh, market weights um, uh, for these banking stocks, Nordea uh, is by far the largest bank in the Nordic region. So um, it's going to have a 35% uh, uh, weight in the in our market portfolio. And and this uh, uh, niche uh, online bank, Avanza, is is uh, we assume it's only two percent of the market portfolio. So given this market portfolio, we can then calculate the implied market returns. And, and these are, um, uh, is actually the risk premium that we would uh, demand to hold this portfolio um, uh, in terms of risk reward. We, this is the return we should demand of, of each individual uh, stock. And it's scaled by the market price of risk, which is uh, arbitrary number. I've assumed market price of risk is about 2% per annum. So that's why we end up with these. So if we would do mean variance optimization with these returns, we would then get back the market uh, implied portfolio. So that that's the thing. These will, uh, investing uh, with this market implied return view uh, with these uh, weights will give us back a portfolio with these weights, so by design. Uh, so the first step is the black Litterman return uh, adjustment then. So uh, we have some uh, views. So these are arbitrary views. I'm setting 5% instead of 8, 7 
that of 7.7 .7, and so on. Uh, so we have lowered our expectations a bit and we can turn on and off our view uh, uh, on these. Uh, if we want to uh, have a view on every individual stock in, in the in the set, we, we turn this view uh, on as one. And, and if we don't have a view on a certain stock, we can turn it off and then it will inherit the view from, from its pairs. And um, we can also, if we don't want these stocks, we can go to the to instrument selector and, and choose any other stock we can, uh, and, and, and do the calculation for that stock instead. Um, uh, now we have uh, the market price for this one, so we're going to use this. Um, so with these views, and we have a certainty of these views, so uh, a view scale of 1 uh, will uh, make an equal weight of the market return and my return. So we can see what happens if, we, if my view is much firmer, uh, then uh, we will get uh, a mixed return that's much closer to my view and then we get a different portfolio. And if we lower uh, my, my uh, view, then uh, we get uh, a portfolio that's much closer to the market equ equ equilibrium portfolio. So we're going to set this to one uh, for now. So we get a, a, an adjusted market portfolio return. And then uh, we do the black Litterman optimization, or actually we do uh, the portfolio optimization to get the whole frontier. So for, for each risk level, we can get find the optimal portfolio given these uh, market returns, the, the mixed market returns with my own views. And uh, at a certain point, we will find the super efficient portfolio assuming that we have a risk-free rate of return at, at zero. So um, there's no use in, in taking the portfolio on the efficient frontier above this line because uh, then we could just take this portfolio and, and, and uh, uh, leverage it using, using uh, the risk-free uh, rate of interest. So, so this red dot will represent the super efficient portfolio. And as you can see from the graph here, you have the individual stocks, uh, as you're uh, familiar with, um, they're in the plane. Um, we see this one has high high risk uh, and low return, and, and this has low risk and, and, and low return. Um, and so the mix uh, will, end, the portfolio mix will end up here at the super efficient portfolio. But the, the, the green line are, are all the, the complete efficient frontier. So if we have no possibility to uh, lend money, uh, leverage or deleverage, then all the green uh, line represents a, a, an optimal, optimal mix at each risk level. So then we can see what we got. Um, we, we get, uh, instead of holding the market portfolio, uh, that would be the efficient way to do this if you have no views. Uh, our views lead us to invest a bit less in this stock and a bit more in, in, in this uh, uh, center stock. And, and these obviously come from our, our returns. So, so these uh, mixed return estimations are uh, guiding because the risk is the same because we haven't manipulated with with the covariance matrix that we that we calculated so and we can see that we should uh, uh, up our investments in, in this little stock uh, beyond the the market uh, cap because our view is obviously higher than um, than uh, the market implied uh, holding on this stock. So our, our new uh, risk return profile uh, for the optimal portfolio would be uh, holding uh, this composition, giving us a 16.6 .6 percentage point uh, standard deviation and uh, expected uh, yearly return on 6.1%. And uh, 
this is the black litman optimization uh, uh, and we have the code here again uh, using the same functions that we used in the regular mean variance optimization um, in the last uh, video if you want to know more about this uh, you should uh, first read the original article uh, and then uh, uh, you can uh, find some uh, good explanations of, of uh, uh, how to interpret this on, online uh, or uh, contact uh, algorithmic app for some more information thank you very much